The UN Secretary Council, the UN Security Council rather, has agreed to send peace monitors to Syria as the fragile ceasefire looks close to collapse. And the world's major powers have held what they call constructive talks with Iran over its nuclear program. Well, let's return to our main story, the events in Syria, of course. And I'm joined now by Saka al makadi who's a journalist and Syria analyst. Um, thanks very much for coming in. Um, first of all, the, the, obviously the news from Homs, the reports are that there is widespread violence again. Your reaction? Well, I think, you know, we're all still in shock that the ceasefire has lasted the way that it has for so long. And I think no one was expecting it. To, to hold either on the government side or on the rebel side. I think, you know, all eyes are on any hint that there may be some kind of breakdown in the ceasefire. There have been reports of shelling in Homs, other violence across the country uh, from army and rebel fighters. But I think at the moment what we have to celebrate is the fact that there have been so few deaths in the past 48 hours or so. You know, reports of a handful of deaths. The, the figures had been in the dozens, in the hundreds over the past few days. So I think the fact that the death toll has been lowered so dramatically is the big success of the ceasefire so far. All right, but nevertheless, we have what is a very, very small team at the moment. Mm. A very small team of monitors poised to go into Syria and I think the big fear is that they won't be given the freedom of movement that they need to be able to make sure that the ceasefire is holding. Of course we had the Arab League monitoring team that went in a few months ago. That was ill-fated and it collapsed after just a month in the country. There were defections from the monitoring team. Uh, countries pulled their, their monitors out because they weren't being allowed to, to roam the country. They were being given government minders. They weren't seeing exactly what was happening in the country. I think that's the big fear for the team of monitors that's about to go in. Of course, you know, reports of 7 to 15 monitors is nowhere near enough to cover a country like Syria in the first instance. Even if that does increase to 250 in the, in the long run, if Kofi Annan gets his way and gets the full team in, that's not going to be enough to make sure that the ceasefire is holding. Um, but, but I think this is political and it is, it is a success that we have to celebrate nonetheless. Now, is it your hunch that with things like food prices, petrol prices rapidly increasing in the country, that the Assad regime, that could be the way that the most trouble comes for the Assad regime? Because his own supporters are getting angry. Well, it's very difficult to predict how and when the government will fall. I think the, the fact that prices have risen so dramatically, the, the value of the Syrian pound has has fallen by 50% over the last few months. The, the, val the value of the dollar has doubled in the last few months. And that's really pushed prices up for staple foods, for heating oil, which people really suffered through the long, cold winter. I think things are getting slightly better now because the price has stabilized a little and because temperatures are warming up. But it's not just the, uh, the, the prices which, of course, are affecting the government. Of course, the government feels emboldened now, and I think its supporters do as well, because the government's played really rather a qu quite a clever hand here because it's allowed the team of monitors in on its own terms. It's agreed to the ceasefire on its own terms. It's claiming a victory. It's being able to claim a slight, slight moral high ground in this whole debacle. So I think its supporters feel slightly more emboldened. I think the desperate need now for the Syrian people, and I think what Syrian people are calling for, uh, as well as, of course, the overthrow of the government, but in the, in the very short term, the urgent call is for peace and for violence to stop. And I think the Syrian people have got that, even if it is a very, very fragile ceasefire at the moment. And we've been getting footage that we can't verify with people showing footage of tanks going through the streets and people calling out and saying, where is Kofi Annan? Are you getting the feeling that people in the country are, are pretty angry as well with the, with the uh, void that was put on by Russia and China about getting the wording through quickly? Because it was the lack of speed that caused so many problems. Of course it was, and I think you know, the country is divided. I mean, you've got the vast majority, I think, now of Syrians who are firmly against the, the Assad regime. You've got a, a core support group who will stand by the president no matter what. And then you've got a, a silent middle ground, which I think is shrinking all the time. But the country is polarized. It's incredibly divided. I think it is very, very angry on both sides with the international community for politicking, for playing around, for using the country as a proxy war. And I think people will only be satisfied when the Assad regime falls and when there is peace in Syria. Saka al-Makari, thank you very much indeed.